Hello, in today's video we'll talk about eGPU and more precisely about the Oculink eGPU. In this video I'll do a quick unboxing of the eGPU model I have ordered so you would know what to look for and what to expect visually from an Oculink eGPU. I will also go through the Oculink eGPU setup and do a step-by-step -step installation tutorial so you guys will be able to emulate my setting with ease. Oculink eGPU is the most efficient eGPU model available on the eGPU market at the moment. Oculink port have a much better data transfer speed rate than the classic USB Thunderbolt port. Thunderbolt port have a data transfer speed varying from 16 gigabyte up to 40 gigabyte per second in the best case. Whereas the Oculink port data transfer speed is a whooping 60% faster with 64 gigabyte per second. Now let's see what is inside this package. The Oculink eGPU that I got is the OkuP4 model, sold on AliExpress for $70. In my order, I paid an extra $10 to get an NVMe M2 adapter, which I won't use in the video because my mini PC already has an Oculink. But this adapter could be used if your device have no Oculink port. That's the beauty of the Oculink eGPU. It means that even if you don't have an Oculink port on your device, you will still be able to install yourself an Oculink port with this adapter and get the best possible performance out of your external graphic card. There it is. This is the NVMe M2 adapter that will turn you NVMe M2 slot into an Oculink port. The Oculink port entry is in the back side, right here. This is where you Oculink cable should be plugged in. There's the Oculink cable that will go from you Oculink eGPU to the Oculink port on your device. You have the option to choose the length of the cable. I picked the 50 centimeters cable option, which is the longer cable available. I wouldn't recommend the 20 centimeters cable as you don't want to find out that it wasn't enough after receiving your package. I like the security clip that the manufacturer set on this Oculink cable. It will prevent you to accidentally disconnect your cable from your Oculink port. This clip will lock your Oculink cable that is plugged into the Oculink port of your device. There you got the power supply unit rack with its four screw hole where you will firmly fix your power supply unit. This white little plastic piece will be placed at the bottom of the eGPU dock to seal your power supply unit. Nice! It also comes with the screwdrivers. In this last package, you'll find the eGPU dock. Design is minimalist, but still, it's a nice black metal plate. It looks solid. There's the 24 pins power supply unit, ATX 24 pins. The seller also offers an SFX version, which would depend of the GPU card you would have choose. Mine is an NVIDIA RTX 4080, so I went for an ATX eGPU model. There it's the Oculink port, and that's pretty much it. Unlike other eGPU, you don't need to plug any CPU pin power cable. Now let's move to the eGPU setup. You would need one power supply unit, one graphic card, and last, but not least, one Oculink dock. The power supply unit I got is the 850 watts Bronze Hydro K from FSP Manufacturer. You will not need such high power voltage unit if your graphic card only require two PCIe 8 pins cables. As my graphic card is the NVIDIA RTX 4080, this 850 watts power supply unit was matching this card power requirement. First, we'll start by fixing the power supply unit bracket to the eGPU dock with two screws. It will help you to fix your power supply unit to the Oculink dock with the previously showed white plastic piece screwed at the bottom of the eGPU. Down here is the Oculink port of your Oculink dock.
now I am plugging the Oculink cable into the Oculink port. Again, this cable have security lock clips on the both ends of the cable. Secondly, I have fixed the power supply unit to its bracket with four screws that were included in the power supply unit box. And also screwed the white plastic piece at the bottom of the Oculink dock to completely seal the power supply unit to the Oculink dock. The last thing to do now is fixing your graphic card to the Oculink dock. Gently push your graphic card connector into the PCIe X16 slot. Now that your graphic card is in place, you will fix it with one screw to secure it. Now that everything have been firmly fixed to your Oculink dock, we can now move to the final stage of the setup by powering your graphic card with the power supply unit PCIe 8 pins cable and powering the Oculink dock with the power supply unit 24 pins cable. My graphic card needs 3 PCIe 8 pins cable. Unless you have a similar graphic card than mine, or better you won't need a power supply unit with 3 PCIe 8 pins cable. 2 PCIe 8 pins cable would be fine for most graphic cards. Okay now, we are ready to roll. Let's plug the power supply unit and be sure. I repeat be sure. To plug your HDMI cable from your graphic card to your monitor, you don't want graphic out of your PC or mini PC. You want the graphic out of your graphic card. Now let's power on the mini PC and check if the magic happened. Nice, the monitor is showing your graphic card display. Before benchmarking the graphic card performance at 3D Mark Time Spy, you will need to do several things to make your graphic card work correctly. You need to uninstall your previous GPU or graphic drivers with DDU software in safe mode. After your computer restart, you should install your new graphic cards drivers. Mine is NVIDIA, so I would have to download NVIDIA drivers install software. If you have an AMD graphic card, then you would have to install AMD drivers from the official AMD website. I'll show you quickly how to use DDU for a clean install of your new graphic card drivers. First thing first, type DDU download in your favorite search engine. You should download it from guru3d.com. Extract the folder, but don't launch the program now. You need to do it in safe mode. To get into safe mode, go to Windows setting, system, recovery, advanced startup, restart now. At computer reboot, click troubleshoot, click again on advanced option, then startup setting. Click restart. At the next reboot, you will be asked for a boot option. Type 4, enable safe mode. Now that you are in safe mode, you can use DDU. Double click on DDU. Run the file. Extract the file. Double click on display driver uninstaller. Wait for it to launch. Close the pop up windows. Go to select device type. Select GPU and pick the manufacturer you want to uninstall. If you previously have AMD drivers installed on your PC, then click AMD. If you had NVIDIA drivers previously, then select NVIDIA. Last you click in the upper left menu, clean and restart, highly recommended. Now you are done with DDU. Now that your computer have restart, you can download the new drivers for your new graphic card. Google download NVIDIA drivers if you have an NVIDIA graphic card or Google AMD driver install if you have AMD drivers. When the download of your respective drivers is completed, launch the application and click Next. You know the drill. Now that you have your new drivers being installed, you should go to Windows Device Manager and disable your iGPU if you got one. Mine is already disabled. And also check if your new graphic card is enabled. OK, it's finally done. We are ready for game test and benchmarking. Now let's test this Oculink eGPU performance with 3D Mark Classic Benchmark Test. Let's start with Time Spy. There it is. We scored a legendary score. It's a world record with this combination of hardware. Previous record was at 23,678 points. We scored an overall score of 23,660 points and a massive 28,596 points on the graphic score. By comparing our results with the 3D Mark Time Spy Hall of Fame for the 8845 HS CPU, we rank first in the RTX 4080 Supercard, and overall we rank just below the RTX 4090 at the fifth place. 
Unfortunately, my record is not eligible for the Hall of Fame ranking, although my score is valid. The issue is that I can't find out how to fix this hardware monitoring disabled issue. Neither AMD Adrenaline or MSI Afterburner or 3D Mark have access to all my CPU data, including the temperature. I can only get the temperature with HW Monitor. Okay, I digress. Let's move to the next benchmark. Yes, we scored another legendary score with this combination but I can't see any previous record with our hardware combination. We can only compare our score with the 8845 HS combined with an RTX 4070. Our overall score is 43,533 points. And the best RTX 4070 with the 8845 HS is, is 36,403 points. I wish there were some RTX 4080 to compare our score, but it is what it is. It's a bit surprising to see that nobody except me had made this combination benchmark on Firestrike. I guess everybody are focusing on Time Spy only. Again, we scored a legendary score with Night Raid, but again there were no previous record with our CPU and GPU combination. There was only one RTX 4070 who made the test with this CPU and GPU combination. Okay, let's move now to our last benchmark with Cyberpunk. I am recording the video with OBS while benchmarking, so it will impact lightly the FPS result. During the 3D Mark benchmark, I wasn't recording during the game benchmark because I wanted to close every program on my system to get the highest score possible. Benchmark is made at 1080p ultra setting with DLSS turned on and frame generation off. We are arriving at the end of this video. If you want to see more game testing with this Oculink eGPU, you can watch my video on the Eostar Gem 12. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a like. It will greatly motivate me to do more videos. There is the result. 100 FPS sharp. Bye, thanks you for watching.